Sailing across the Atlantic Ocean has been an emotional roller coaster, to say the least. And after 15 days at sea, we're now finally coming into view of our longed for destination, the Azores Archipelago. Not only are the Azores perfectly situated as a stopover when sailing across the Atlantic, they're also the perfect reward for those who have taken on such a daunting challenge. You're doing it. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Beautiful towns nestled among huge green mountains with adventure around every corner. I came by and looked right at me. And a unique culture to explore. It started raining outside, so we asked us to come in. The Azores are exactly what we needed after sailing over 1,800 miles from Bermuda. What do you see over there, Jen? Land. Land ho? We see land ho! <laughs> I know it's like all about the journey and not the destination, but the destination's looking pretty daggone sweet right now. <laughs> What do you think, bud? It almost looks like a movie set or something. Yeah. It's so unreal. I feel like it would be pretty awe-inspiring to anybody, but to see it in the context of having only seen ocean for 14, 15 days, it's almost like my eyes can't believe it. Oh, so what do you think, buddy? Look at that, I'm so... Our first port of call in the Azores would be Horta on the island of Fayal. I knew getting into Horta would be a bit stressful, as this is the first stop for almost all of the boats that are crossing the Atlantic. And since this is the time of year to make that crossing, I knew Horta would be packed with boats. Right now, we are trying to find a good spot in the anchorage to drop the hook and wait till morning so we can check in. This is definitely the most crowded anchorage we've ever had to anchor in. We're just taking our time. <laughs> All right, so we are settled-ish in this anchorage. It's a little bit unsettling because we are atrociously close to at least one other boat. And I just hate that. Like, I, I really avoid situations like this as much as I possibly can, but it's just, there's not a lot of room here and it, the anchorage is full right now. Less than ideal situation that will work for the night. Okay, how's everyone feeling in here? When we first dropped the anchor, I came down below and I was like, I'm so tired. I feel like I've been beaten up. But then I started making dinner snack, so now I've got energy. <laughs> I was just joking with Desiree, like, was wandering, came out of the companionway and went to go tell her something and then automatically and instinctually started grabbing it things as it was moving through the boat. We don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. No hands! <laughs> and you're not moving. <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. We did, did it. it! We did Woo. it! Good job. Yeah, we did it, yeah. John. We did it! We did it! Woo! How'd you sleep, buddy? Ugh, like a rock, man. You like sleeping when you're not moving? Yeah, it was great. And the weirdest part, though, was that we all slept at the same time. So it was like a slumber party. <laughs> Gosh, some folks from Windbreaker came over and like saw that we had come in last night. And so they brought like eggs and like fresh bread, some kind of pastry. I just feel like just about any little positive thing makes me feel amazing right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, this bread is so good. <laughs> I love bread, you know what I mean? Yeah, so thank you very much, Elsa from Windbreaker. All right, so we're all checked into the country. We're all rinsed up, we're all set. And we talked to the marina and we, there is actually a spot on the inner seawall. There's so many boats coming through here that they actually raft boats up to each other when they're against the seawall. And they'll raft as many as three boats together at a time. It's, you know, less than ideal, but I'm just looking at this anchorage and it's just so packed. It just, all these boats are on a super short scope. So you just never really know who's gonna drag when the wind picks up. So although rafting is something I've not really done in the past, I think it's gonna beat being in the anchorage. We were lucky to get to tie up directly to the seawall. And for the time being, we wouldn't have anyone rafting up to us, but we were assured that it wouldn't be long until someone would come to tie alongside. Good job, buddy. We did it. We <laughs> can't believe we did it. Good yeah. job to you too, little man. <laughs> this is like the pinnacle of the last year of just 
working. It seems like such an easy thing to do, like spend 15 days on a boat, but it was so much more nuanced than I thought it would be. For me, that was very challenging. During the crossing, like I kept just thinking in my head, like at some point, this will be over. And like at some point you will be there. <laughs> and like I kept saying that so many times that like eventually I like stopped believing it. Me too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Having crew for the first time, the weather router for the first time, being on the boat for more than five days at a time for the first time. It was a lot more intense than I thought it would be. So how are you feeling now? I'm feeling so tired. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. there's many pregnant women who have sailed across the Atlantic. I'm pretty sure our baby is not going to ever get seasick. If our baby gets seasick, <laughs> we're just not meant to be on boats. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we are experiencing another first for us. A new boat just wrapped up to us, and we've got boat neighbors now. So party on your boat tonight? I'm <laughs> Gisla. Gisla? Gisla. Nice to meet you. I was wondering. Is that your new home? <laughs> So where are we going, buddy? We are going to a traditional Portuguese restaurant to celebrate arriving on terra firma. <laughs> this is currently the farthest I've been from Atticus 2 in 15 days. <laughs> nice. You're doing it. <laughs> Woo! Yes. I can't express enough how good it felt to finally get to walk after being on the boat for two weeks straight. Just getting to continually move my legs and move forward for minutes at a time felt unreal. And I couldn't wait to explore this really awesome looking town. It looks like there are very, very few, if any, natural, really good protection harbors in the Azores. And so I think all the good harbors are like literally carved out of the earth forcibly made by mankind. We were all very excited to get some delicious traditional Portuguese food, but even more so, I think we were excited to call it an early night and finally catch up on some sleep. So as you probably remember, I had a really rough Atlantic crossing. I was seasick pretty much for 15 days straight. And that's a bummer for a lot of reasons, but one huge one is that I was really hoping to dive into my Portuguese lessons on Babbel, but I could barely bring myself to look at my screen. Personally, I've found that traveling is so much more rewarding if you can at least attempt to try to speak the local language. So now that we're in the Azores, I've been trying to practice as much as I possibly can, even if I only have 10 minutes a day. And that's one thing that I love about Babbel's lessons because they're short, 10 minute interactive lessons that make it really fun and engaging. I also love how Babbel focuses on real world practical conversations so I can learn and practice what really matters as quickly as possible. Boa tarde, seja bem-vinda. O que você gostaria de saber? Onde há um supermercado? I think my favorite feature of Babbel is that it uses speech recognition to help me correctly pronounce words. Como faço para ir para a rodoviária? Keep working on it. Como faço para ir para a rodoviária? We're super excited because we were able to get you 65% off of your subscription to Babbel. So if you've been thinking about diving into a new language, definitely click on the link in the description below and start learning a new language today. Also a huge thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this week's video. Man, so Horta, it's so different, right? Like it's our first like kind of European town that we've made it to. But one of the coolest things about it to me is all of these paintings that surround like every square inch of the docks, of the breakwaters, of just all the concrete around the harbor. And basically these paintings are done by the crews of boats that have passed through Horta. This is just a huge stopover 
for boats going all over the place. And so each one of these paintings represents like some kind of an epic journey. And you can feel it, like if you look at the paintings themselves, they're often really ornate, really beautiful. But the coolest thing is the fact that they're just absolutely everywhere. And like all of these people on all of these boats are trying to make their mark and say like, we did this super cool thing and we want to become a part of that like kind of giant sailing horticulture, which is so cool. Horticulture, that's not the right thing, but you get what I mean. From the beautiful buildings to the sidewalk tile mosaics, Horta had a very distinct black and white color scheme, which mixed with the super green hills beyond made for a very dramatic contrast just about everywhere we looked. Narrow roads and old buildings gave us our first taste of the European vibe that we were really looking forward to when we set sail from North Carolina over a month ago. For a relatively small town, Horta has tons of cafes. It felt like every other street corner had a little shop where we could buy any number of delicious pastries, as well as my favorite, a galau, which is basically a Portuguese latte. All right, bud, we got a lot of stuff up here. What's going on? Yes, today is a free diving day. We are getting out on the water with a local dive guide named Numberto, who is apparently like a big personality because he's super passionate about uh, marine wildlife. And probably shouldn't say this because I don't want to jinx it. Apparently he's taking us to like a secret uh, shark diving spot. I'm really excited. All right, let's go. Coming with us on the shark dive was our crew member Jen and her boyfriend Chad who flew in to visit, as well as our buddy James from Sailing Zingaro and his girlfriend Anna, who arrived in Horta just a few days before we did. So if you see that the shark is getting too comfortable around you, you can also show him who's the boss. Just look real confident. Ideally. I wasn't super nervous until he was like, show him who's boss. But Are you going to show that shark who's boss or what? I don't know. Hopefully I don't have to. Just show him who's boss with your eyes. Yeah, just, you know, make sure it's clear yeah. that they know that you like, are the boss. <laughs> After being cooped up on Atticus 2 for so long, it felt amazing to be off on an adventure with good friends in a beautiful place. And so what are you supposed to do if a shark's getting too handsy? I guess one normal behavior that sharks have with each other to communicate like, hey, this is my territory, is they turn around quickly and throw water in each other's gills. So I guess what you're supposed to do is take your hand and get some water in their gills. So no punching today. No, no punching. <laughs> I learned a punching technique. <laughs> I'm big into punching myself. Yeah, I'm big into shark punching. <laughs> All right, we got our first shark. Ooh, there he is. Look, look, look. Oh man, that's definitely a pretty shark. shark. Wow. I think any normal person experiences an extreme fight or flight response when seeing a shark swimming right at them in the water. But I trusted the guys working at Norberto Diver and eventually the fear slowly turned into excitement and then just pure joy when I finally eased into feeling comfortable around these huge predators. Oh, cool. <laughs> 
When we finished with the shark dive, Noberto took us on a quick tour of the coastline of his home island of Pico. Here, jet black volcanic rocks meet the sea for mile after mile, and we got to see some local fishermen using traditional methods to catch a parrotfish, which is a very typical Azorean food. We then set off in search of sperm whales. The Azores are renowned as a rest stop for sperm whales on their Atlantic migrations. Yeah, this is so cool. Not only are there like seven sperm whales around here, but then there's this like huge playful pod of like the most adorable dolphins I've ever seen. They're just playing and jumping and showing off. Yeah, it's amazing to me that we saw the whales and the dolphins like right next to each other. The Rissus dolphin, they fight a little bit, <laughs> fight or play a little bit with the calves of the sperm whales. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, sometimes we feel that they, okay, go away. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they like to play with the, with the calves. That's mm. funny. Yeah, <laughs> this is dolphin. That's what you think, James. Whales and dolphins, beautiful, turtles. Beautiful, beautiful day. Yeah. Beautiful, doesn't get any better than this. Norberto then invited us to his home on Pico, where he would be hosting a get together with his friends and family and wanted us to come along. Chad, I'll give you 50 bucks if you pick up that bundle of man o' war. I'll give you another 50. No. That's a cool hundy. That's a hundy, man. These public cranes were actually something we saw a lot of in the Azores. And I think the coastline is just too rocky to have conventional ramps for boat trailers. So instead they install these public cranes where people can launch their own boats. Noberto and his wife have cooked us a traditional Portuguese dinner. And look at the view. It is beautiful here and that's Pico. This Azorean barbecue was such a unique experience, and the smell of parrotfish roasting on the open grill reminded me of just how hungry I was after a long and tiring day. And I was even more stoked when I got to try some of Norberto's homemade canned tuna. We put it there, and you can keep it during two years. And That's I so make cool. 400, 500 bucks in wow. the winter we eat, and you give it like a gift in Christmas for you. Yeah. Is the cheese local as well? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. This one is from San Juan from the village. If you make the cheese from the mountains, from the cows that live in the mountains, it's a different taste. Oh, yeah. It's the reason that we have in the Azores many different types of the cheese. This is a mountain cheese. Nice, for a mountain man. Did you build this yourself? Yeah, I built this, but I spent quite three years for building. Really? This, this is actually a really common thing to have um, in houses like this because a lot of the fishermen, after you know spending a day out on the water, they want to come home to someone's house and just kind of hang out you know, have a couple of drinks, make a bonfire, and then they try to like exchange with their neighbors. So he might bring the fish, but then the neighbors will bring like the potato and the onion. So he was saying there's not a lot of like public places they can go and like hang out at a bar because it's so remote and it, that would be expensive. But having like a setup like this in your front yard is kind of like what he's used to. I think it's super cool. So we've said it a couple times since arriving in the Azores, but it still kind of blows me away just how much of the construction here is built out of these blocks of volcanic rock. I mean, it's like everything, like the gates on the driveway to the house, like little tables that they set the food on, the grill over there. And so it's, again, just so fascinating, like these islands that are so green in a natural sense, and then anything man-made is like black and like concrete or rock. <laughs> good? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> It started raining outside, so he asked us to come in. Such a cool house, a really neat spot. Shark diving, sperm whale, dolphins, turtle, turtle, like boat trip to New Island, cool house, stupidly good meal, good company. I think today was a very good day. <laughs>